ancient civilizations in Southern Africa, Mapungugu and Great Zimbabwe, continue to puzzle contemporary society. And dating from the 10th century, both have left a lasting imprint on the landscape. And how these civilizations developed and came to their fateful end remain the subject of scientific, historic, and public interest. Unfortunately, there are no answers as yet. The reason is to do with our own approaches to investigating these civilizations, which fail to ask relevant questions. What is needed is blue skies thinking, a kind of thinking where creative ideas are not limited by current thinkings or beliefs. This thinking implies a willingness to, to take calculated investment risks, focusing on exploring important and or a new phenomena rather than the run of the mill themes. This thinking is expected to push frontiers of knowledge and possibly become a point of gravity for subsequent research. This is what we are currently doing for Mapungubwe and Great Zimbabwe. Entitled Collapse of Ancient Societies, our NRIF-funded research project examines the development and demise of the civilizations based at Mapungubwe, Great Zimbabwe, and I can even extend Axiom in Ethiopia. I am the principal investigator, leading a team comprising a postdoctoral fellow, Dr. Federica Sulas, uh, with both at UP and Cambridge, a doctoral student, Tendai Sindo, lecturing at Great Zimbabwe University, and also registered as a, um, you know, um, a student with us, and two master students in archaeology, Aquiline at Midland State University in Zimbabwe, and Bongumenzi Kumalo, who is um, a student in archaeology at the University of Pretoria. We are collaborating with geologists, soil scientists, hydrologists, and other specialists. Our approach centralizes water. This is because the region is water scarce due to rapid runoff, periodic droughts, and prolonged dry periods. We are aware that existing archaeological and historical studies are poorly informed about catchment radiology, whose dynamics are fundamental in understanding past human decisions. We know that moisture management was vital for successful agricultural production and other domestic requirements in the past. The fundamental logic is that archaeological sites situated in regions that are considered marginal for human settlement or are unable to support large populations are in themselves a reflection of past human decisions in the intricate, in the intricate interplay between water and culture. So then, to what extent did water and its management play a part in the development of Mapungubwe and Great Zimbabwe? How did humans respond to water scarcity, too much rainfall, flooding, droughts, and increased aridity in the middle Limpopo Valley, for example? Where did Great Zimbabwe get its water from? And could the water supply sustain a population estimated at about 20,000 people? These research questions are important in understanding the fate of these civilizations. Over and above our conventional archaeological approaches, we are conducting soil and silt sediment analysis and hydrological surveys and characterization of, for the landscape around both Mapungubwe and Great Zimbabwe. Our objective is to assess the Limpopo River's flood archive and determine the hydrological behavior of Great Zimbabwe. Soil sediment and geomorphic evidence from both contexts will allow multi-proxy reconstructions of changing sediment availability and transmission through the catchment, while their characterization is expected to interrogate the past presence of humans in the landscape. The data is then tallied with known cultural events for the period 900 to 1500 AD, the period associated with the development and the demise of these two civilizations. Investigations commenced in mid-2011 and is currently work in progress. In the interest of time, I will spare you the intricate details in terms of what has been done in the field, in the laboratory, as well as collaborations with a range of specialists who are relevant to our work. So here are the provisional results. The middle Limpopo Valley reveals well-stratified sediment 
and silt lot of the river, which reflect the river's flow regime, past and present, as well as hydrological characteristics of the associated fault plain and adjacent escarpment. Preliminary results or analysis of soils um, suggest prolonged settlement in areas where abandonment was previously thought to have occurred. Even in the lower sections of the Limpopo River, the vegetation suggests the persistence of open grasslands. Field surveys around Great Zimbabwe reveal very interesting results on the hydrology of the site. We can announce in this forum that the ancient city was sustained by a cluster of springs located within its core as well as its periphery. The granite hills around Great Zimbabwe have rich underground water reserves, which translate into springs, into marsh, and then streams. The water was channeled towards the heart of the settlement through underground streams and harvested from reservoirs in various parts of the settlement. We are currently modeling rainfall figures from both Mapungu and Great Zimbabwe to evaluate models linking the expansion and contraction of the Mapungu civilization to significant past climatic episodes and to determine the hydrological budget for Great Zimbabwe. The results will be made available in the next few months through dissertations, thesis, as well as um, high impact journals. Here I'm talking about geoarchaeology, general of archaeological research and antiquity, as well as edited book chapters. And I'm talking about a special volume of, uh, on water to be published by UNESCO uh, and edited by um, Professor Venom Scalbra, a leading Mesoamerican expert on water and ancient civilizations. <coughs> We are also talking about another volume on giant anomalous, anomalous settlements to be published by Arizona University Press, editor being Roland Fletcher from the University of Sydney, a leading expert on Angawat and Asian Ebenism. Any research on ancient civilizations like Great Zimbabwe and Mapungubwe is best informed through creative and original thinking and working with specialists from other disciplines. In this way, the study of the past becomes more interesting and relevant. Now, in accepting this award, I'm conscious of the challenges my department is facing in terms of research, researching is, I'm reaching its research targets. My colleagues are working hard to realize this, and I regard them as winners in this respect. Their support is acknowledged. I also thank the faculty for the support given, especially to young researchers, and for recognizing the value of research in building a stronger university. Thank you.